Today, we're putting all of this villager stuff behind us and turning our attention to this little bit of land. By the end of today's episode, we're gonna turn this little patch of land into a beautiful new build and farm in our world. What kind of a farm, you ask? Well, it's gonna be, get it, a sanctuary and honey farm. Basically, bees and honey, because this farm produces honeycomb very well, but it's not fitted for honey. And sadly, there's no way to turn all of this honeycomb into honey. So we have to create a new farm. Also to give us a nice way to fill in this little patch of land we have. So if you're excited for today's episode, stick around and I hope you enjoy it. First thing on the agenda today is going to be getting a good path up to this build because currently this way is not a very good way to get up here. So we're going to try and cut a little natural path going up that cliff face right there and probably end it about right here. And then this entire area will get transformed into our build. And we're also going to try and build it into the mountain. That way we don't have to keep going through that tiny little hole you see up there. And we're not going to use the same block palette for this new build because I want them to feel like they are actually different builds because they are going to be. And I think the differentiation will help them stand out a lot better because they're so close to each other. Ouch. So what's the opposite of birch, what do you ask? Well, yep. But before we can get too far into the build, we need to work on this path. I might have gotten a little carried away, but this is the end result. And on the inside, we have an almost complete interior. On each side, there are six modules for bee nests, and those will each collect the honey and distribute them into these chests on either side. And then back all the way through, we have a nice new staircase up into the mountain area. I will link the farm that I used in the description of this video. I didn't talk much through the building process, really just because I wanted to practice some interior design and just kind of flow with it without having to worry about commentating. And I think the end result really speaks for itself. Now the last thing we have to do is get our bee nests in and then the farm should be ready to go. But I am forgetting about the couple thousand glass bottles that we're going to need to fill these farms. Almost there. Now I did say we were also going to create a bee sanctuary, but before we can do that we actually need a good supply of bees. And I don't have any surplus bees. So we're going to spend some time trying to breed these ones up and get all of these beehives filled so we can fill our farm and start on a sanctuary for these bees. Okay, all of the bees are in place now, and I'm really hoping that each of these hives has three bees in them, because with all the chaos that was going on up in that room, I could not really tell which ones are full. But now the last thing we have to do is fill them all up with bottles, and the farm should be good to go. Quite painstakingly, every single one of these dispensers has been filled with nine full stacks of bottles, and one extra stack in the hopper right in front of them. It's safe to say we're good on bottles for now. And the next step in today's episode is going to be creating that bee sanctuary I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, and it's going to go right in this area here. For this one, we're going to kind of build it into the mountain because I want there to be a lot of glass showing, and if I build it straight under the mountain, there's not really a lot of spots that we can put glass. So right along this cliff face, we're going to put a very beautiful structure for all of the bees that we are going to be holding in our sanctuary. Now for this bee sanctuary, we're not going to quite use this same palette. We're going to try and bridge our way between that and our original honeycomb farm that we created. Because I really want to incorporate the red textures in with the dark oak because I think they look incredibly beautiful when they're paired together. So we're going to grab a lot of our bricks, a lot more dark oak, and we're going to need to get a lot more glass. I have been seeing these guys quite frequently. Before I get too carried away again, this is what I have landed on. Pretty simple design and it kind of fits right into the side of the mountain. And you can see how we're starting to kind of bridge what we have over there and what we have with the red tones in this build. They're similar but they're not quite the same and I think they do complement each other very well. Of course this is only the base of the bee sanctuary. We still have to complete the entire top of it. 
And the inside, I suppose. And currently there is no way to get up here. So I'm thinking we are going to have to put an entrance or stairwell right up this way. And that way it gives us another reason to come back into this little secluded corner of our base area. Right in line with this path that we had laid out already, we have a nice staircase that twists and turns all the way up to the entrance of our build where we have a double set of doors that ensure bees won't get out. And you can notice right above me, I started some outlines for where I want the walls to rise up and connect to an outline that we are going to create next. You can tell already, but this build is going to be sectioned off into two different areas, but they're both going to have the same sort of aspect and layout to them. This front area is going to act more like an entryway than it is going to be the sanctuary. And then back here, we're going to have a room that sprawls way back into the mountain. That's going to have all the bees, all the nests, and all the different decoration bits that we're going to add into the interior of this build. I had an initial idea and it kind of ran away from me. Coming through the front set of double doors here, we have this open space, the entry area that I was talking about earlier. This is going to be one of the main areas where all the plant life is going to be. Same with this room. But as you can see, I expanded probably a lot further than any of us were anticipating. But now we have plenty of space to include a ton of beehives, a ton of plants, and a ton of detail. I have some spots laid out where I want some of the hives. We're going to add a lot more in rows going along in this upper area. In this area, we're going to try and put a lot of plant potters and a lot of plant life because this is where most of the sunlight is going to be coming through. Not that it's very sunny right now considering... It's been downpouring the past four days of my world. From my initial ideas, this kind of got out of hand, but honestly, I love the way that it came out. And I'm very excited to get to detailing. We're going to have a couple of different sections with a couple of different wall colors. And over here, you'll notice these two things. They kind of look like doorways, don't they? Well, I was thinking we can try and incorporate some of the farms that we were going to put upstairs, which right above me is where the hollow mountain is and include them into this bee sanctuary. That way we have an excuse to come in here and see all the detailing work that we are going to do instead of just doing it and then never seeing it again. So this side, I'm thinking we're going to have a spiral staircase down to wherever we have our copper field, which I always intended on putting below the surface level of the hollow mountain. And then the second doorway, I think we're gonna do a lava farm or a dripstone farm somewhere down there. Just something that'll get us to come in here and see all the hard work that we're putting in. Now you might be able to tell by the wall of colorful circle boxes right behind me, but I have been putting in some work for this build. Yeah, that's right. Every single one of the walls is now filled in. We've got spots for the beehives, spots for some planners, nice walls, outlines for the doors of the rooms that we're going to create later, and even an interior waterfall. I felt like we needed to include some kind of hydroponics in this area because there's no way we could have all this greenery which we are still going to add. This isn't the greenery that we're going to end with. But have all of these plants in here and all of this life inside here without any kind of irrigation system. So one of the final bits of details that we're going to add in this area is a bunch of copper piping all throughout this room that will hydrate all of our plants and create an atmosphere where it really feels like there's just life teeming in this room. That paired with all the plants and all the life that we're going to have and all the bees flying around, this place is going to feel like it's actually living and breathing. Now we are going to take refuge from this torrential downpour in our new sanctuary. We're going to ignore all of this and focus on all of the greenery and the detail that I have added to this sanctuary. <clears throat> As I was saying... There is a ton of greenery, leaves, particles, everything that you could think of I try to fit in here, aside from the bee nest still. Now once we get the bees in here, I really hope it feels like an open atmosphere of just life and plants and beauty and everything great about nature. I try to incorporate as much of the leaves and all the greenery into the ceiling and around the walls and make it feel like there was just something to look at everywhere you turn your head. And I feel like once we get all of the bee nests in here, this place will really feel like it's living. There is one thing that I did just remember, and that is those hydroponic pipes that I mentioned just a little bit ago. So I'm going to get those installed and I'm going to get all of the bees into this area. And I think after that, we could call it a wrap on this project.
Now we're gonna take a look at some of the final details that I added in and around this build. Walking up, you can see I started to experiment with some different tree shapes and a lot of different greenery and the occasional particle effects from a hidden spore blossom. I added things like park benches, lights, different rocks around the terrain, and overall just a lot more greenery in this area. I did add a lot of detail to these hills over here, not because I needed to, but because I was kind of in the mood to do something with them. But moving on back over to the bee sanctuary, up the steps and through the front door, I can finally show you all of the bees that I added. It's been raining a lot and these guys have been nesting and now they are finally out enjoying the sun. And oh my gosh, I did not realize that they could drown. I'm going to have to put something in front of this wall. But you can see how lively it feels now with all of these bees flying around, all of the different things happening, all the different bits of life that you can see. At this point, I think it's safe to say that the inside of this build and the outside having been complete means that this bee sanctuary is finished. Now the last thing we are going to do today is dig out our copper field and after that I think we're going to call it a wraps. This is by no means the fanciest thing in our world, but it's not supposed to be fancy. It's supposed to be functional, and as a functional build, I think it is quite beautiful the way it is. And who knows, we'll probably come back down later in another episode and actually make it look pretty, but for now, I bid you adieu, Copperfield. You too, Henry. Now you may be able to tell by where I'm at, but we are going to finish off this episode with a little comment of the day. Now I haven't done this in quite some time, approximately 10 episodes for that matter, and I would like to apologize for that. As you know, life can get extremely busy and I am quite new to this YouTube thing, but I'm going to try and be a lot more consistent with shouting out the comments of the day. I do read them all, I just always forget to put them in the episode. And for the rest of the episodes, I'm going to try and get a comment of the day and try and remember because I think it's a very important community aspect and I really enjoy shouting out you guys in the comment section because I appreciate you guys, all of you guys down there so much. But today's comment of the day is from Meyer Lippman. He says, always killing it, Coda. Truly one of the most underrated builders on YouTube. You know, I, I really appreciate comments like those. Oftentimes we can be our own worst critic and those little rays of sunshine really help motivate me to continue to create content and try and build new things and expand my style and present it to you guys because I know no matter what there's always people that are going to feel like they can't do it or like they're overwhelmed so seeing comments like these really reassures me and really gives me the confidence to share with you guys what I'm learning and hopefully that helps you guys learn as well. But as the sun sets on my world, the sun is also setting on this episode. So again, thank you so much to everyone who comments and says nice things. I really appreciate it more than you could know. But with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day.